Welcome to Investigation 4.1, Looking at Patterns of Change. We are in this equa- or in this investigation, when you work in the book, you'll be looking at pumping water out of a swimming pool and seeing how much time it takes for water to get pumped out of a swimming pool. In this investigation video, however, we're going to be looking at burger flipping. We're going to be looking at a burger joint and seeing how much profit they have based on the number of customers and also based on time. So using this idea, let's jump right in. A local burger joint keeps $300 in the register at the beginning of the day to make change for customers. As well, their typical customer orders, that should have an S on it, sorry, orders an average meal that costs $7.50 a person. The following equation describes a profit for the burger joint in terms of N customers. So we have profit P. We're used to that. Seven fifty. That is the average price people pay. We have also n, which is our customers. And this minus three hundred. That's that three hundred dollars that they keep in the register no matter what. So this is not profit. This is simply money that they have in the register, so they can always make change for people even at the beginning of the day. So, how many customers are needed to break even for the day? So, using this equation, let's do a little bit of math. How many customers are needed to break even for the day? That means our profit is going to be zero. So, we could say zero is equal to 750N minus 300. We need to break even. All right, so let's do a little math. 300, let's add 300 to both sides. So, I get 300 is equal to... 750N, and I'm going to divide by 750 on both sides, divide by 750, and I will get 40 is equal to N, and that is 40 customers. Sweet. 40 customers they need to be able to break even, to make sure that they're at least not going in the hole. That should be doable for a burger joint, especially if it's good. Hopefully they're as good as Burger Bob's. If, on average, the burger joint saw typically 30 customers an hour, write an equation for the profit in terms of time that the burger joint is open. All right, so first of all, I'm going to not get myself too confused, and I'm going to first write down my original equation that we had before. We have our profit is equal to 750N minus 300. So no matter what, they make 750 per customer, and there's $300 to take taken out. So, if on average the burger joint saw typically 30 customers an hour, that means 30 customers times T hours, that is the total number of customers for a day. So, N is equal to 30 times T. So, this information could go right in there for N. Instead of writing N, we could write 30 times T. So, we could write our new equation profit is equal to 750 times 30 times t plus or minus 300. This is something we know how to do. We learned about this in investigation, um, I think 2.2 or 2.1 when we were playing around with different versions of equations. Um, essentially, what we're doing here is we're doing substitution. Now, we could also write another equivalent expression for this and make it a little simpler so we don't have a lot of um, timesing by timesing by timesing. So we can say 750 times 30 is equal to 225. So our equation could be simply P is equal to 225 times the time minus 300 would get us our total profit. So how many hours is the burger joint open if its profit is $2,175. So profit is equal to $2,175, and my equation is P is equal to 225T minus 300. So that tells me I need to put this information in for P. So I'm going to do just that. I get $2,175 is equal to 225T minus 300. Man, it's such a pain in the butt to always be, like, solving for t. It would be nice if there was actually an equation that just said t is equal to something. 
I suppose we can probably figure one of those out. So let's first do this math because we've done this math before. We're going to add 300 to these babies. So we get 2,100 or 475. I almost messed that up. It's equal to 225 times t. I'm now going to divide by 225. We should do that in that pink, minus 225, divided by 225, not minus, divide. 2475 divided by 225 is equal to 11 hours. So the burger joint would have to be open for 11 hours to make that profit. Pretty intense. Okay, so we got 11 hours, but this is the second time we've had the same equation and we have to have, and we had to solve for T or we had to solve for the number of people. And it would just be nice if there was an equation that we could write that already had that done for us. So we just had to maybe plug in the profit and be able to solve it from there. So let's do just that. We have profit is equal to 225T minus 300. And we're actually going to do this exact part right here. Can you write a general equation for profit in terms of the number of hours the restaurant is open? So we're gonna write this equation in terms of time, the number of hours it is open. So we don't know what the profit is. It could be anything. Okay, so now let's do a little bit of math. We don't know what the profit is, so we are going to simply treat that P as just being there. It is not something we can solve for. It's not something we know, but we know all of these other numbers. So we added 300 to each side. We have P plus 300 is equal to 225 to, times T. And now we're going to divide by 225 on both sides. And we simply get that the profit plus $300 divided by 225 would get us the amount of time that the restaurant is open. This is an equivalent equation to this one right here, except that we have T isolated. This is what's called isolating the variable. And isolating the variable can be really, really helpful and actually make our job a little bit easier. It allows us to write an equivalent equation with a different perspective. So isolating the variable is the ability to write, I cannot spell today, an equivalent equation from an alternate point of view. So in this case, this point of view is in terms of hours. In the other one, it was in terms of profit. So if I knew how much time was passing, I would be able to figure out the profit for that burger joint. If I knew how much profit uh, the burger place made in a day, I could figure out the time it was open. So let's use this to practice just a couple of very generalized equations and find a couple of equivalent expressions and then we'll be done. So we have y is equal to 4x minus 7 and we need to solve this in terms, uh, solve in terms of x. So we need to essentially make this so x is equal to everything else. The only way we can do that is if we first add 7 to both sides. So we have y plus 7 is equal to 4 times x. After that, we're going to divide by 4. So we have y plus 7 divided by 4 is equal to x. So this is helpful. If I knew what x was equal to, if x was equal to 4, I could put that into this original equation, and I could say simply x is equal to 4. So 4 times 4 is 16 minus 7 would equal 9, so y would equal 7. Um, or uh, Sorry, y would equal 9. And then if y were equal to, say, 1, I could put 1 in terms of y. 1 plus 7 is 8 divided by 4 equals 2. So 
again, helping me out a little bit. I've already done the math. I don't have to do a lot of extra work now. This next equation, we have g is equal to negative 20 times t plus 15. We need to solve for t. What does this particular equation look like if it were equal a t were equal to everything else? So we have a little bit of work we need to do. We could either distribute this 20 in first, or negative 20 in first, to make our lives a little easier. So we have g is equal to negative 20 times t plus negative 20 times 15, which is equal to negative 300. From there, we just need to solve for t. We need to do a little bit of math to make t by itself. So we're going to add 300 to both sides. So we have g plus 300 is equal to negative 20 times t. Now we're going to divide by negative 20. Divide by negative 20. So we get g plus 300 divided by negative 20 is equal to t. So that's another equivalent expression to the first one that we had. We could also rewrite this one in yet another way really quick. This two, negative 200 is dividing that g, but it is also dividing this 300. 300 divided by negative 20 will get us a negative 15. So we could say g divided by 20 minus 15 is equal to t, another equivalent expression. All of these equal the same thing. So play around with this concept of isolating the variable and look at the patterns of change that you see in the pool sort of um, decreasing its water content, draining, and play around with investigation 4.1. Complete investigation 4.1 A through D. And if you have any questions, as always, please ask. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you later.